Okay, okay well, so well, here we are, all five of us. Leon will be with us shortly. We are incredibly excited that you're here. Uh, we have a lot to cover in an hour. We're going to, oh, here's Leon. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is, um, so hmm. I'll turn it back over to Leon because as we often remind people, you know, five sisters, but Leon is the producer of the show. Thank you. Oh boy, I had such a great open plan, but whatever. It's so fantastic to have everybody here. I almost got choked up. Heather Moran, thank you so much. So and thank much. you for, for buying all that stuff from those sponsors, Heather. You can't thank you enough. Uh, okay, we are going to have a loaded show. We have a short history of Satellite Sisters for those of you that are new. We have a trivia contest where we have a longtime Satellite Sister listener that was randomly drawn is going to be playing. Uh, the Lab Rats are doing a command performance and we're taking your questions. So, um, Feel free to put them in the Q&A. But we're starting with an old school gambit. Uh, when we used to start doing these press conferences a long time ago to introduce ourselves to various people, uh, we always introduced each other as opposed to having to introduce ourselves. It's a good trick. I recommend it at any company meeting. But <laughs> Sheila, take it away. You're, you're up first. All right. Well, Leanne, you're up first. Let's talk about you. All right. Well, Leanne, Leanne hosts fabulous parties, as everyone knows. She has very healthy boundaries, which I appreciate. And she writes award-winning novels. I enjoy a visit to Leanne's garden, her beautiful garden. Uh, if it's a hot drink, I bring the lattes or she'll offer me a seltzer. And we have short, sweet visits, don't we, Leanne? Yes, she'll, we do. And Leanne may be the youngest sister, but her achievements are constantly reblooming. And giving some of the older sisters a run for our money. Right, Monica? Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to introduce Monica. And Monica is an adventurer. And even in this weird year, you know, we don't even need to say it. She's been out there adventuring, whether it's on her electric bike or on her new snowshoes. She's got a homemade sandwich in her backpack and she is out there seeing whatever she can, experiencing what she can. She is a thoughtful neighbor, uh, a loyal friend and a great sister. And I gotta say this year, not only has Monica flown to Los Angeles twice to care for me since I had my accident, but because she's a nurse, she's also been volunteering at vaccine, uh, at big vaccine sites. So Monica yay, is a healthcare yay. worker. She is Thank on the front lines. And was even there yesterday at the mass vaccination site in Portland. So thank you, Monica. Thank you, Liz. Good work, Monica. Well, I now have the great honor of introducing Sheila, who is the most middle of the middle Dolan sisters, which is, and she holds that role uh, near her heart. She is the go-to sister for entertainment and fashion and beauty advice. She excels as a tutor and a teacher and ordering food, takeout food. I mean, honestly and truly, you should see Sheila with a phone. It's amazing. Uh, but the other thing that she is the ideal co-conspirator. Whatever is the situation, Sheila is, is your partner in crime. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Okay, I'm gonna introduce Julie. You know, Julie always keeps things classy from her sweater sets to her, look at her Zoom background set. I mean, look at that. Um, also, what I would say about Julie is there is no travel itinerary that is too daunting for Julie. <laughs> She's on the plane, she's in the car, and she just goes no matter what. Nothing holds her back. And she also now is the youngest, coolest grandmother we know. Coolest grandmother. Thank you, Thank you Monica. Thank Urban you. Urban Urban All right, and I, I get to introduce Liz. So we've always said about Liz that Liz is in charge but not in control, right? That was the line <laughs> going way back with Liz. But now I have to say that's incomplete. She's she's in charge. She's not in control. She's a pretty decent cook now, which is really a shocker of all her accomplishments. I honestly, of all her accomplishments, this is the most shocking to me. All right, she's number two in the birth order in terms of sisters, but she's number one. If you're looking for someone with a big idea, 
bold statement or very generous Christmas gifts. <laughs> it's, Liz. it's Liz. She is a fun aunt. She is a very loyal friend. And she is absolutely the fastest talker, despite the fact that literally every show I have to text her and say, slow down, slow down. Please slow down. Liz, just keep talking fast, Liz. I just don't think your mouth can keep up with your brain. And that's what I think. <laughs> Maybe it's too late for that. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do our short uh, select history of Satellite Sisters. So we're gonna share the screen. Screen, I did a PowerPoint, so hold on to your hats because it's, <laughs> it's mediocre. Yeah, it's new mediocre. Skills. wow. Okay, so we thought we'd give you this brief overview of Satellite Sisters. When did it start? Who came up with the idea? Did you all go along with it? And I believe this next slide captures the exact moment when our sister Liz cooked up Satellite Sisters. <laughs> oh, you can see it there, right? If you look closely, Liz is holding up a blue ribbon that says first. <laughs> Clearly, you can see she's thinking she wants to be first in the women's digital media space. Now that doesn't exist yet, but that's Liz. She's always thinking big. <laughs> Who's on board? Who's on board with the satellite sister concept? Which sisters are in? Well, clearly Julie, Liz, and Sheila are in alignment there. You can see they're tri a trio. It's Monica who's the holdout. <laughs> As Oprah would say, is she being held or held back by our brother Jim <laughs> at the top of that photo? Monica, the reluctant satellite sister. Okay, and Sheila is the classic middle sister. You can see here on the left in the group photo, she's sticking out her tongue and already thinking, I want a spinoff. <laughs> okay. And then on the right, there she is, or on the left, there she is getting some red carpet practice that will come in handy at future Gracie Awards. <laughs> Okay, this is a rare photo of the first Lab Rats episode. Yeah, people don't know that. That's Sheila and Monica in the yellow suits, and I believe they are testing bathing caps. So to pause up for these bathing beauties. Now, you may be asking, where is Leanne? Well, she's not born yet. <laughs> oh, but there she is. That's right. Julie, Liz, Sheila, and Monica were looking for a producer to take their sister act to the next level. And guess what? Their mom gave birth to the producer. So there's Leon at the top of the photo in her mother's arms. Uh, this is Easter with our cousins. That's my mom, her twin sister, and 17 children. Okay, but look, who's that bunny? Okay, that's, <laughs> that's some bunny special, right? That's Liz. And you can tell Liz, she's looking off into the future and she's thinking, how can I monetize this whole big family thing? <laughs> All right, this is very rare uh, footage of the very first Satellite Sisters production meeting. I am having a hard time getting control of these people. <laughs> All right, fast forward 30 years, and here we are at our real first photo shoot. Satellite Sisters has been on the air for a few years on public radio and our first book was coming out. So we all met in New York City to do some promotional stuff. And we learned a very hard lesson that photo shoot. It is nearly impossible to get one photo that all five women like. <laughs> It's about this time that Julie moved from Bangkok to Moscow. Here you can see Julie and her international businessman husband. And look, oh, there are four out of five satellite sisters in Red Square because we were asked to host an international fundraiser. Why didn't Sheila come to Moscow with us? Because the airline wouldn't allow her to travel with her Cuddle You mattress. That's right, that's a true story. She didn't go anywhere without the Cuddle You. In 2003, we moved to ABC Radio and things really heated up for us. Six days a week, three hours a day on the air, a full staff of wonderful producers and editors, two or three guests a show, magazine covers, great sponsors. We had a column in O, the Oprah magazine, and we went on tour with Oprah. Things were going great. And then we got in the boat. <laughs> That's right, people. When the photographer from People Magazine said, why don't you all get in a rowboat in Central Park? We did. And when the photographer said, why doesn't one of you stand up in the boat? I did, like an idiot, against all my summer camp boat, boating training. And we learned a valuable lesson at this photo shoot too. If you don't wanna be photographed in a boat, don't get in the boat in the first place. Uh, we have applied it metaphorically many times to many situations over the years at Satellite Sisters. Do not get in the boat. <laughs> we, say, we say it a lot. <laughs> 
Oh, here we are at ABC. Besides interviewing a million guests, we developed some signature segments from the Bitter Business Bureau to Believe It or Not to the Chaos Chronicles, but by far our most popular segments were intra-sister competitions that took us right to back to the pool deck of our youth. Okay, mm -hmm. we battled each other over ice cream cakes, making a 30 minute meal in 30 minutes, tablescaping and holiday wreath decorating. But the best intra sister contest, which, which are you? Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, I could look at this photo all day long and still not understand why Liz chose to dress up as baby witch. It's very disturbing. <laughs> she, Sheila called herself a red haired Irish witch. I dressed as that witch from yoga class. Uh, Monica was glam witch and Julie, who was the winner, was the classic witch. Yeah, I got the green color right. Like, and that's why I <laughs> you, did. Yes. you did, Joel. All right. In 2008, the podcast era began. And that little photo on the bottom left is Liz and me in my closet in Pasadena in 2009. And 10 years later, here we are at the Wondry Studios in West Hollywood. Over the years, Ooh. Satellite Sisters has won. Yeah, I added some new photos, girls. Oh, More glam. Wow. Yeah, all right. Glam it up. <laughs> Satellite Sisters has won 13 Gracies for Excellence in Women's Media, including Best Talk Show, Best Online Original Programming, which is what they actually called podcasts before podcasts were a thing, uh, and an individual honor for Sheila for her movie reviews. I put these photos in to make up for the witch photos, because I think we look really good in these photos. <laughs> All right, we've been privileged to write two books, Uncommon Senses and You're the Best. Uh, touring with both of these books was a really special experience, seeing family, friends, and so many members of the Satellite Sisterhood. A real highlight for us. Thank you. My, my daughter-in-law made those signs. That's what, <laughs> Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. There's no way when Liz cooked up this idea that we could have imagined the community that's developed around Satellite mm. Sisters. We have mm. nothing funny to say about this, but mm. thank you. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you so much. Amazing. Mm. Okay, now I'm crying already. Uh, all right, but here <laughs> oh, we go. All right. okay, How can it be yeah. 20 years? How can it be 20 years, you guys? Look at it. It's like no time has passed. So let's celebrate. Okay. Right. So, Liam, that is amazing. There were... There are even some pictures there that I've never seen. That's <laughs> been, it's been an amazing 20, 21 it, years. It really has. It started yeah. early. Yeah. The early lab rats with the bathing cap testing. Who would have known <laughs> what, that would grow into such a big thing? So, you know, over the years, I mean, the show has had many iterations, and so have we. We we've we've done things right, we've done things wrong, we've made some bold predictions that came true, and then others. Well, really not so much. So we thought here we are 21 years in, we would each do a little reflecting maybe on what we got right or what we got wrong or what was important. So we're just gonna go around the horn and have a little chit chat, just like we do on the show. So Julie, let's start with you. Thinking about right and wrong, what, what, what are your highlights and lowlights? Okay, 21 years no nude photos, okay? <laughs> I think, I mean, it's been the downfall of so many people, but not us. <laughs> don't get in the boat. Clothes off, no news photos, okay? <laughs> I think that was key. Maybe our greatest accomplishment. <laughs> Second thing that I think we got right is our view of women, that we stood up to whoever, newsmakers, corporate leaders, politicians, university presidents, actors, uh, athletes, anyone that wanted to diminish the inherent capabilities of girls and women, we took them on. And I, and I think that's mm -hmm. been a, a good two decades of work right there, okay? Um, third thing we got right, Dr. Forney and the rules of civility, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I mean, we were talking about civility so long before. Now everyone talks about, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could all be civil again? But you and Dr. Forney, you were putting it out there. Back we in did the that so long. The late great Dr. Forney, we miss him. Um, so that we did right. I have been right about Putin, Kim Jong-un and his family, and Camilla. Okay? That's all. <laughs> yeah. I'm not giving Strong up on statement. That. I know. Okay. <laughs> Now, when I think about the things I did wrong, it's a long list, okay? But the highlight of that list 
is uh, we were talking to a young up and coming international news reporter. He was so hardworking. We thought he was so cute. And his name was Anderson Cooper. But I called him Cooper Anderson on our show. <laughs> It's part of the problem, too. people we called by the wrong name, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm still not over it. Okay, I just, this is going to take me. It's going to probably gonna take me another fifty years. I don't know. That's what yeah, I've Shelley, got. Shelly, you called. Um, you called Carol Radzewell, Lee Radzewell, <laughs> her mom. I remember that. That's right. In the same family. We interviewed, yep. I interviewed the, the reporter, the TV reporter for the uh, Times, uh, Time Magazine, like a million times. I pronounced his name wrong every time. Uh, he was such a good sport, James Ponawasik. He's now at the New York Times. So uh, yeah, that's <laughs> so many wrong names, so many. I remember we, we were interviewing um, Andre Agassi's sister, Tammy, because she, and she was like really insistent in advance, like I'm my own person. I don't want to talk about my brother. <laughs> I was so freaked out about it that I kept calling her Tamacy Agassi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. It's it's a good one. It me nervous. And then also when I listen back to my, my yeah. interview with Tom Brokaw, that's one where Leon, I can, I'm just going a million miles a minute. Oh, like, you were so, I'm you were nervous. Anything. Yeah, I was so nervous talking to Tom Brokaw. Luckily, he's an old pro and he just, you know, pretended he understood what my question was. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, yeah, Joel. On. Good recap. Sheila, highs and lows, rights and wrongs. What do you think? Okay. I was definitely right about cozy clothes, was I not? I mean, <laughs> one of the yes. I mean, one of the only good things that came out of 2020. I no longer have to apologize from Going from the bedroom to the boardroom, as it were. That's what I do for my job. What what boardroom do you go to? Is that your boardroom? This is it right here. This nice. is it. Okay. Um, also, for 20 years, I have been boycotting Woody Allen films. Mm -hmm. Full stop, sisters, on that one. Okay. Right. And finally, I think I was right uh, about Halle Berry's Gothica, which no one saw including me when I wrote a review of the movie. <laughs> okay, wrong. I was wrong about compression bras. I mean, after spending a year braless, I'm never going back. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I ain't going back. The only bra I'm ever gonna wear is Third Love. It's just it's a mild, some mild molding, <laughs> not compression, sisters. Okay. Um, and I was wrong about one of my biggest heartthrobs, Johnny Depp. He turned out to be a real loser. Yeah. Right? Like many uh, of your boyfriends, Sheila. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, he definitely wasn't worth tripping over my own microphone cord for no. to get an autograph. And yeah. that was that was a low point for me. <laughs> okay, so there you go, rights and wrongs. Yeah, you did some serious red carpet coverage back in the day. You, you know. You, you were good. You were going Thank after those people. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. <laughs> like, okay, Monica. All right. I'm gonna yeah, yeah, I'm going to jump in with something positive. I think something we did right was putting Leon in charge of all of our writing assignments. Thank goodness. Yeah. Leon, our editor in chief. I mean, the magazine articles, when you forced us to write those blog posts. <laughs> You know, you would always help us, all the books we did. So that was something we did right. We turned to Leon. Something we did wrong. Um, we saw a very young Taylor Swift one year, one year at the Gracie Awards. And um, we were a bit concerned for her because no one was paying attention to her. So backstage, we met Taylor and her mother. And Leon offered her a very heartfelt good luck on your career like we felt like she needed a boost yeah. that was project self-esteem that was good she, point. Did, she did fine without us one other thing we got wrong i remember a funny thing sheila said we were talking about computer passwords and what's the most common computer password in the u.s and sheila said snoopy um that is not right sheila <laughs> You know that's not right. I know that's not right, but at the time, but I thought you it was- blurted it out. You blurted it out so I fast. I did. I did. I was completely 100% sure about it. It okay. was one of those moments where we were all laughing so hard. 
we got to what they call in radio dead air. Yeah. Snoopy was a dead air moment. Okay. Liz, what do you have? Okay, well, I was thinking about, we've, we've had some real blunders on technology predictions in general. I mean, I do give us credit for mastering all the technology and doing all of this. Look, it, we've been putting our voices out there for a long time. But I remember when Twitter was brand new, we were talking about it on the show. And at the time, people didn't even really call it Twitter yet. It was called microblogging. And I was oh. like, what? What, what, I was like, blogging is already so micro. Why would we need something even more micro than blog? I didn't like the word blogging, and I certainly didn't like the word micro blogging. So it's like, this Twitter thing just can't happen. No, it's, you know, Lee and I believe you had some weak uh, technology predictions when it came to if people would ever watch TV on their phones, right? Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's, <laughs> we, were, we were really convinced that was ridiculous that no. you'd watch anything on your phone. No. That was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, when you're live on the radio three hours a day, six days a week, you will literally say anything. You were. <laughs> you haven't really thought through some of these opinions all that much. You're just talking. You're looking at the clock, and you see you got three more minutes. So what else can I say? So there is. All right. What we get right, Liz? What's your What's your final thing on what we got right? I would say, um, in the in the beginning, people would say, "I don't understand the concept for this show. Like, what is this? I don't get it. Like, I I don't hear it. What is the sound?" And we said. It's the sound of friendship. Yeah. This is the way women sound when women talk to each other. And I yeah. feel like we got that right, Leanne. We definitely got that right. Yes. Absolutely. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> so um, another big thing we got right, Leanne mentioned uh, up at the top that, you know, we developed signature segments so people would have a chance to develop their individual voices. And, um, you know, there were many great ones, but tonight we just felt like, there's only one, one that we really needed to bring back for such a big moment. So um, this is it, sisters and misters. Put your paws together. Put your paws together for <laughs> Sheila Dolan and Monica Dolan, the lab rats, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. All right, hello, hello. We are the lab rats. I am Sheila Dolan in Los Angeles with Monica Dolan in Portland, Oregon. And Lab Rats is the time, time of the show when we road test consumer products and report back on our findings. Monica? Oh, Sheila, so good to be with you live today. Gonna go a little bit off script here. You know, we usually test products that we can buy, but this time we did products that we made. So we have some homemade Lab Rats items. Um, what we're doing today, it's called quarantine snacks that you can eat anytime. We wanted to do sort of an homage to several things. Snacks, cooking with Liz, although we're not gonna steal your thunder, Liz, believe me. And then on the cozy couch with Parade Magazine, because Parade is our source for this. What a, what wow. a, trifecta. What a trifecta, Monica. Yes, Monica and I have been doing a lot of snacking. And, um, and I have been doing a lot of eating. And luckily, uh, Parade Magazine just published 21 quarantine snacks that are delicious and make working from home so much better, so much better. Um, so now for our methodology, wow, it was hard to narrow it down from 21 snacks, right, Monica? It was. So my idea was to make one sweet and one savory. And we wanted to make something that was presentable. So we did, we tackled the zucchini bacon cheddar scones. Whoa. <laughs> Whatever they are. Whoa. Whoa. I know. My neck is snapped back that you two are doing this. Okay. And chocolate peanut butter bites, chocolate banana peanut butter bites. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of a pushback from Sheila because it involved two things that she is unfamiliar with, using the oven and melting chocolate. <laughs> I, I really want to make the tortilla chips sprinkled with cinnamon. That is, that's more of my level of cooking. Um, but Monica, let's start with the scone experiment. Now, my, my methodology was first I had to fire up Old Bestie 
the oven, which I hadn't used in five years. Um, ever since I had a sweet potato explosion in there. Um, and I had, I don't know about you, I had a two day prep for the scones, Monica. I mean, how about you? She told me she made, it took her two days to make okay. the scones. So here they are, I'm going to reveal the scones. Wow, oh. they're large. Oh. They seem very large. <laughs> Those look like hash brown. Are those hash browns? Those are bigger. Okay, I may be a tutor, but I think my ratios were off when I cut the recipe in half. Uh, it was mainly zucchini. I needed more flour, and it just, they, they exploded um, in my oven. Monica. Oh, my gosh. Well, I tried to test batch, uh, thanks to Liz, and it was so bad. I showed them to Leon in a text, and she said they looked like zucchini blobs. So I came back, I tightened up my measurements, and I think they came out pretty well. So have That's a sweet. look. Dramatic. Oh. oh. Well, okay. they're scone-like in appearance. Yes. Thank you, Leon. That's I like it that you put for. it on your Russian Lomonosov uh, China, too. Yeah. Like really, thank you for noticing that. It's my Russian China. Yes. I thought these were absolutely delicious. I mean, cheese, bacon, flour, butter. Um, I made a huge mess in the kitchen, though. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. I so, made a today mess. I'm really proud of us. But, Monica, let's give it our pause rating. Okay. I, I'm going to get the scones. One paw up, one paw up for the two day prep. I mean, when I'm quarantining, I want to grab and go. I want to grab and go. Monica? Um, as you can see, two paws up. I mean, I love them. They were great. I don't know if I can make them again because I'll still be cleaning up my kitchen. But okay, we're the lab rats. Today we're talking about quarantine snacks. Perfect to eat anytime. Sheila, let's move on to our sweet selection. Mm. Chocolate peanut butter banana bites. Um, <laughs> they're, know, they're frozen chocolate covered bananas. And uh, that's a mouthful right there. So well, tell me about yours. This I could handle cutting bananas, putting a dollop of peanut butter and then putting the other um, banana on top. I had to buy a double boiler because I'd never melted chocolate before, but mine came out mini and oh. very beautiful. Oh, ooh, those look, oh. you know, edible. Wait, give us another look at those, Sheila. We just got a quick <laughs> They're absolutely gorgeous. Oh, okay. We'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to have to take your word those for that. Those look good. They look mini. <laughs> I well, had to buy well, two well, matching well. plates for this segment. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the plates as well. Yes. That's okay, Monica. Well, for, for my uh, for my double boiler, I used a soup pot with a saute pan on top. I don't think that is correct, but I'm going to tell you these little banana coins. They are slippery little devils in the <laughs> chocolate, and I I lost a few in there. Um, but I thought they were fun and tasty. Now I'm going to show you mine. And I um, tilted a few upwards so you could see the peanut butter banana sandwich. Uh, okay. What do you think of those, Julie? They, I they love the plate. Great. The plate looks really oh, come on. beautiful. Those look no, those look good, Monica. Monica. Your those look, good. Those really good. look good. Those look delicious. They're those slippery. They're slippery, you know, though. All right, so let's get to our all important rating system. Monica, I'm giving two paws up for the peanut two butter. Paws up. I'm going to be consistent. Yeah. No, I love this, these. This is a good snack. Oh boy, this has been fun, Monica. Thank you. A lot of <laughs> your, a lot your of paws fun. were the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's the, mine. I told no, the you, I think you would be surprised if you tasted these. <laughs> I found these paws. That's what I do for teaching. I take JPEGs, print them out, and laminate them. That's, that's basically my whole year. Okay, well, this has been a lot of fun today. Um, and as we say, Monica, let's say it together. Ready? Happy, Happy snacking. snacking. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Way to go. Way to go. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, now it's the Q&A time. Uh, we want to bring back Heather Moran from Sixth and I. She is going to uh, lead the Q&A. Hi, Heather. Welcome back. Thank you for doing this for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just want to say, um, Sheila, I like stones the size of my head. So I, <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I want to give you, I want to give you two paws. I do. Thank you, Heather. Um, of course, we have so many good questions from the audience. April wants to know um, how the Satellite Sisters got her, got their name. She'd never heard that story. Um, you know what? I think we're going to take a pass on this because Great. this is part of our trivia. Oh, yeah. so it, it's an excellent question, but we don't want to tip off our, our player in the trivia. You know what? That just shows how in it April is. It right? is true, she's April. Like, she's <laughs> already... You know, you'll, already, already, you'll get your answer. You'll get your answer. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So Diana wants to know, she loves your success and she's really curious to know what the brothers think. Oh, they, yes, they have been very supportive from the get-go. They have listened to the show. They have, you know, they buy the magazines, they come to the events, they tell all their friends. They, they are great brothers. Uh, they, um, as adults. Yeah. They're, they're really wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I mean, Wonderful. that begs the question. The, is, there were some fights in the backyard growing up, but uh, they have been, all, they are solid gold satellite misters. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll all stand by that. Have, we have three brothers. We have two older brothers and one brother that is in between uh, Monica and Leah. Yeah. That's, That's great. Good. <laughs> all right, good. So, um, Patty wants to know, what's the number one thing? I'm sure there's many, many things that you feel have kind of kept you together, but what's the number one thing that's kept you together? What's the glue that's kept you together when there, I imagine, were so many times it could fall apart? Yes, Monica. I'll answer that. I would say sense of humor. It's just what keeps us together. And when we do segments that are funny, um, the listeners really like it and we like to laugh together. We have similar senses of humor and it just, when we're mad at each other, um, it just makes things go easier when we start laughing together. Yeah, I, was I, would also, I would also, go ahead, Liz, go ahead. No, I was gonna say the same thing. I think we keep doing it because we have so much fun doing it. I do think there's something to not living in the same place. I mean, the original concept was the show is that we had our, our own lives and our own friends and our own things going on. And we weren't just like people who showed up on TV, like that other show with all those women on couches and like pretended to be friends or pretended to have lives. So I think the fact that we do have our own people and our own, you know, other work and our own other lives so that when we come together, it's really just, it's fun and authentic. It's genuine. And we're, we're not all like in each other's faces all the time. That's helpful. That's true. Working yeah. together by ourselves long before the pandemic, we were doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trailblazers in every way. <laughs> well, it, one of the other questions is about how often you talk to each other outside of the show. Well, I, I, I've been calling Monica every weekend for 20 years, right, Monica? Yeah, and I would say more during the last year. I mean, Definitely. we probably text or call a couple times a week. Yes, I do. Uh, even though you were working at a job in an office, <laughs> I still text you and call you. Yes, I do. Because I'm lonely. Yes. Liz? Yeah, I would say we have a we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one contact in different ways. I get a lot of emojis from Sheila, you know, especially, you know, since I have my accident, like very cheerful, pick me up emojis. You know, obviously Leon and Julie and I talk a lot about the show, but the, in the weekly production for the podcast, but we talk about other things too, separately one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I check in with Monica all the time. So yeah, I think there's a lot of, a lot of one-on-one -on -one that's completely unrelated to any of the work we do together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, Linda wants to know, she is a mom of eight kids and four of them are girls. And she wants to know if each of you have the same personality and quirks now that you had when you were younger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, an affirmative, yes. Yes. Is she afraid of that happening, Heather, or is she looking forward to that? We, do we it's know a, the question? It's a great question. I think it can cut both ways. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things we learned early on in this process, because we all have, we're five different people, five different personality types, five different sets of skills, strengths, and weaknesses. We used to do a lot of things on the show where everybody had to do everything. Like everybody had to lead the interviews and everybody had to bring a segment in and everybody had to do X, Y, and Z. Monica said, I forced everybody to write blogs. And, uh, <laughs> and eventually we got to the point where we're like, why don't we just let people do what they're good at and stop <laughs> making people, you know it just it was like we called it an all play like this should not be an all play situation people have strengths and weaknesses and we've known that since we were kids and certain combinations of people work better together or have a different chemistry and like when we did the radio show six days a week, which was a lot of days, we'd each, we, there would only be three of us on the air each day it, because we all got a day off. Uh, so we worked five days to rotate through. So there were days when it was the varsity team. That was me, Liz and Julie. And then the JV team was me, Sheila and Monica. But then, you know, there were combinations that involved Julie, Monica and Liz. And that was a different dynamic. And uh, because we're all very different and that's good. That was, it's healthy. Yeah. yeah. We're mm -hmm. not a monolith for sure. But nobody is that different than they were. When no, <laughs> when no, 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 no. You saw, you see the pictures before and after <laughs> you can line us up sheila would still be sticking out her tongue you know it's all still there no you and won't. it wasn't lost on me that liz had the bunny and the baby witch like <laughs> right yeah, I, I'm I gonna think about that. that was the bunny the bunny isn't really my thing but the baby witch i don't know i was i'm not really a costume person heather so i was trying to think of like what would be a witch, but not a witch, a witch you've never seen before? Because I, anyway, so that's why I came up with baby witch. I, yeah. I don't think, I don't think I won that contest, but I think the time we did wreath making for our front doors. I know you oh, won that. and you shouldn't have won Liz. Yeah. You made that square wreath. <laughs> I'm over, mad. I'm over it. Don't worry. They're I'm still mad. It. They're still mad, Heather, because you know why? Because my wreath looked terrible in person yes but i knew that nobody was going to see it in person they were only going to see the the picture um on the blog and i knew it photographed perfectly well so in pictures it looked great but once they saw it on my actual door they were disgusted that i had one <laughs> you played the Billy game Liz. you played the game i'm with you i also to to be totally straightforward when i took the buzzfeed quiz that was on the the created buzzfeed quiz I did get Liz. Oh, and, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. So I, I'm with you. I back up that win with your other <laughs> reason. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so Kathy wants to know what advice you have for aspiring or new podcasters. Um, no. Leanne. I, I would first. say stick with your day job. I think we're, <laughs> I think we're full over here at podcasting. <laughs> we're waiting for everybody who had no work during the pandemic to go back to their work. So like Michelle, Bruce, they can all just go back to their normal lives and leave podcasting to the podcasters. We're just, we're begging you. We're begging you. <clears throat> yeah. It was funny when we, well, Liz, you can tell the story. When we first started podcasting, what'd you tell us? Oh, because we switched, we went from our radio show to doing the podcast, but we were still booking guests. And so I had said, when you're like pitching publicists or the guests, don't use the word podcast. Just call us a talk show. <laughs> <laughs> we not mention that we're no longer on the radio, but they nobody will know what a podcast is. So for there were a bunch of years, Heather, where we were just a talk show hmm. and that worked perfectly well. It helped us make the bridge between radio to podcasting while the rest of the world we were kind of po podcast pioneers in a lot of ways so the, it took a while for the rest of the world to catch up but Heather, I, I would other advice okay. i would give is if you're going to do a podcast make sure it's either a subject you really love or a partner you really love talking to it's a lot of work especially if you want to really stick with it and so you just have to have a passion for it and as we said earlier we just 
so enjoy talking to each other about everything under the sun, we could stick with it. But if you picked a really narrow topic that wasn't really like emotionally motivating to you, it wouldn't take long to just pod fade is the word in the business. Yeah. Yeah. Take long yeah. So I, I can tell, I mean, after listening to you guys, it's not like you're competitive or hold grudges or anything like that. Um, but I am curious because a lot of families talk about like who's mom's favorite, who's dad's favorite. Is that something that enters into the satellite syndrome conversations? Um, do you guys talk about that stuff? Do you have point of views? Uh, you know, we've told this story on the air, but our mother had a child of the week contest, Heather, okay? Every week, <laughs> she would award a child of the week award. She was just desperate to get us to stop fighting and bickering. And so she thought an award contest would happen. But it broke down because Liz kept one like three weeks in a row. Again, <laughs> totally not fair okay she had like the square wreath it was like the baby witch or the square wreath there she wasn't deserving of it but uh but i knew how to play the game i knew how to play the game. <laughs> the other thing, the thing i would say about favorites it wasn't so much like mom or dad in our household it was the boys against the girls yeah. we had to stick together five girls and three boys thank god leon was a girl because before Leon was born, we're like, oh my God, if this baby is a boy and we're four, four, four we have no chance. Yeah. The mathematical advantage. So we were so happy when Leon was born. And that was everything that motivated us was like protecting ourselves against our brothers and trying to bring them down as much as they tried to bring us down. And Heather, I'll just say I was the tip of the spear on that. Okay. That's... <laughs> I believe that it. That was my goal. Okay. Tip of the spear. Julie, I believe it. Yeah. I, I love this question. What actors would play each sister in the movie version of the Satellite Sisters? Okay. I call Kate Winslet. <laughs> I'll take Reith Witherspoon. <laughs> How about Carrie Mulligan? Yes. Yeah. Sheila, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go with Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> yeah, but I'm stumped. I don't know. I don't know. Pick someone for me. I don't. I don't know. Um, Julianne, Julianne Moore. Moore. Yeah, Ooh. Julianne Moore. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. want to see that movie. <laughs> that was good. You guys did not take too long to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Um, when when do you think that you guys will all get together again in person? Do you think you'll wait for a special occasion? Have you been talking about it? In our own <laughs> lives or for, for show? <laughs> well, you're always welcome. You're always welcome at Sixth and I. Consider yourself booked. But I mean in, in real life. I, Sheila lives right down the street from me. Like we, we haven't been within 20 feet of each other in 18 months. So <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, we're pandemic protocol. We actually haven't talked about it. I think we're all getting vaccinated now and we'll figure right. it out like everybody yeah. else in America. But we're, we've been very cautious and careful and yeah, we'll figure something out though. We'll figure something yeah. out. Three, three or four summers ago, we had a family reunion in Bend, Oregon during the summer, which was really fun. And it was us. And we're very close to a lot of our first cousins. You know, our mother had three sisters um, and two brothers, but especially the four girls were super tight. So all of those cousins we love and we love to see. So, you know, I started to think maybe next summer, maybe summer of 22 yeah. we can kind of get together in the big extended family group again because we have so much fun when we do that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish that for you I really really do I hope it comes soon and then here's the last question the last question is what can we look forward to in the next 20 years of the satellite sisterhood oh wow I, I would say um no more of the banana bites <laughs> You said they were slippery. That's no, not a good slippery. adjective. And once they start melting, they're uh, no more of those. I would say definitely. Yeah. No. Uh, maybe the that. maybe the movie is the is the solution, Heather. We've always thought if we could just sell the rights to this whole story to yeah. someone who's then going to go off and do all the work, we would be totally up for that. Like <laughs> the movie, the TV show, fine. That would be fine. 
Call us. Call but, us. <laughs> but in the meantime, we still love just connecting every week. I mean, that, I mean, you, you have to know that, Heather. Everyone, you have to know how much it means to us to that you spend time with us and that, and, you know, we get so excited every week for the show. So, um, so more of that, I would say. Yeah. Oh, it's such a gift. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. I am going to toss it to Liz, who's yes. going to, you know, the, the awaited trivia game. It is, this is exciting. <laughs> this is super exciting. So thank you everyone who bought tickets and who entered. There was a random drawing that Sixth and I did to pick. We wanted one person who could play with us on the air. You can all play along at home or put your answers in the chat, whatever you want to do. But we wanted one Satellite Sisters live with us. So mm -hmm. Nancy Cowan, come on down. Let's just pull it. Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> hello, hello. It's an honor to be chosen. I'm sitting here with my satellite sister's mug. I'm wearing oh. my cassis lipstick, Liz. So I feel. <laughs> Do I feel you really own the cassis lipstick? Yeah, just because of you. Yes, just because. <laughs> <laughs> So Nancy, we have we have never met, right? And you were totally shocked when you got picked. Total, my husband was just reading emails, and I said, "Did I get picked?" And I had to open it up right away. Like, what, what, what? So yes, I'm I'm thrilled. I've been nervous ever since. I know though that all your sisters and the sisterhood at large, you're all, um, you know, we're all among friends. So I'd, I'm happy to hear your answers in the chat if I don't know the answer. Okay. All right. We're not we're not going to be too hard on you, Nancy. <laughs> no, wait, but, but when did you first first start listening to Satellite Sisters? How did how did you meet us? Uh, met you at OPB, Monica. I used to live in Portland, Oregon, um, mm -hmm. Westland wow. actually. And um, so when you were on NPR on Saturday mornings, so for sure at least since September 11th, because I can remember when that uh, happened. I wanted to hear what you ladies um, wanted to say about it. Because I believe, what, did Sheila and Liz, did you live in New York, New York at the Yes, time? we did. Yes. So at least since then, um, you know, maybe maybe your very first show, I don't know, but I specifically remember that. And Julie, I'm a Texan by birth, so my Yay. sister and mother live in the T Dallas area, so um, every time I'm there I think of you, and now I live in Massachusetts. So whenever I drive through Connecticut, I think of all of you. <laughs> okay, and my, no my notes also tell me, Nancy, that during the year of the current unpleasantness, you turned 50 this year. So happy yes, birthday. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and I've been thinking probably since I was 45, what exciting thing can I do for my 50th? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But of course, nothing really happened. And, um, you know, that happened to everybody and everybody's birthday last year and weddings yeah. and all that stuff. Um, you know, we're all the same. Okay. okay, so here's how it's going to work. I'm going to read the questions, and then there are multiple choice <clears throat> answers. So I'll read the questions, and my sisters will give you your choice of answers, and then you just pick one. So okay. it's, you know, it'll be fun. All right, this was the question we got earlier. So this is why we didn't want to answer it earlier. The first question is, who came up with the name for the show? Was it A, Liz, on an overnight flight somewhere while mm -hmm. looking out into space? Or was it B, Lynn, while driving past the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California? Or was it C, my husband, while we were lying in bed? Or was it D, one of our brothers, but I forget which one. So what do you think, Nancy? Yeah. A? I, I don't know. I'm looking at all the chats. A lot of there's a lot of um, <clears throat> conflicting information. Um, I believe. Um, were you all like at a mud bath together when this happened as yes. well? But, okay. but we didn't we didn't name the show there. But that's okay. why our company is called Mud Bath Productions. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm, it's an unlikely you, selection. It's an unlikely choice. Unlikely choice. I guess I'm going to go then with Leanne's husband. Yeah. Oh! Okay, very Excellent. exciting. That is correct. Okay, moving on to number two. Um, which of these was never, never a Satellite Sisters slogan? Was it A, tackling the world one cup of coffee at a time? Or B, 
five real sisters, even though they always tease me that I was adopted? <laughs> or C, going deep on shallow <laughs> topics. Or D, not every conversation will change your life, but any conversation can. Okay, this one's easy. The one that Leanne said was never a real story. <laughs> it's also true they teased me all the time that I was adopted. So that's okay, so B. All right. So I'm the fellow youngest, Leanne. I understand. Yeah. Two for two, Nancy. Two for two. Okay, number three. Where did Julie live when Satellite Sisters first went on the air? Was it A, one of the stands? I think it was uh, Uzbekistan. <laughs> Was it B, Bangkok, Thailand, which Julie loved, even though she had to import her own honey-baked ham? Or was it C, Southern California, which is great because we could call each other after earthquakes. What do you think, Nancy, A, B, or C? It was for sure Bangkok. And um, do I remember right too, Julie, once you had even had your son on the show, one of your sons. Yes, right? my son will, yes. 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 Right. That was way right. back then, I think, too. Wow, that was good. That was right. good. I did. Going deep. I, uh, Julie, I had a brother that lived in Bangkok, Thailand as well. <laughs> Before, okay, Nancy. It's just... amazing we've never met you before, Another Nancy. Another connection, yes, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Number four, what was the very first LabRats product tested? Ooh. Was it A, lean cuisine, which was challenging to cook in a radio station? Was it B, hair mousse, which was just a flimsy excuse to say hair mousse a lot on the air? Was it C, chips, which made a lot of mess and a lot of noise? Or was it D, glue on fingernails, which were <laughs> horrible to get off? Um, what do you think? I don't remember this. A lot of people are saying chips, but it sure seems like mousse would be something more your style. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm tempted to say, Moose. That's my answer. I would have gone for moose too, just because the whole the whole gambit with lab rats was originally just to get a lot of free products. That's why they did it. I thought people would send them. <laughs> but in fact, lean cuisine was the first thing they. Oh, asked. okay. Yep. Okay. You're still way ahead of the game. You're doing. You're doing great, Nancy. Hang in there. <laughs> okay. Number uh, number five. What impression did our engineer John Ramos do? when he called into entertaining Sheila as a surprise guest? Was it A, Madonna in her British accent phase? Or was it B, Queen Elizabeth with a, also with a British accent? <laughs> or, was it, or was it C, Kira Knightley in her Pirates of the Caribbean phase? Ooh. Um, I'm looking at the chat for this one and people are saying Kira Knightley, so that's my choice. Hey, you got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was Kira Knightley. Okay, um, we have one last question and then there's a bonus question. Which one of these was never one of Julie's Tuesday trends? So this was Ooh. never a trend that Julie talked about. Was it A, hula hoops, heavy hoops, hooray for hoops? <laughs> Was it B, instructional videos for cats? Or was it, was it C, $900 clogs? Um, Not something that you I'm like. looking at the chat again. Um, I know Hula Hoops was recently, so I know that's not okay. it. Um, okay, people are saying cats, cat videos. I'm gonna say cat video. That is correct. That is right, correct. Way, way to go. Way Julie to go. Has never recommended cat videos. Okay, now quickly, we're going to wrap up with a final bonus question. Uh, in Leanne's novel, The Sweeney Sisters, uh, in the 4th of July party scene, she features a classic Edna Dolan recipe. And this is also a recipe that Leanne posts every year for the 4th of July uh, <laughs> on her blog. Do you know, Nancy? For all the winnings, for all the winnings, do you know what that recipe is for? <laughs> it is the blueberry muffins, Edna Dolan's blueberry muffins. <laughs> Edna, I have made it before. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You you killed it, Nancy. So that's it. You win Solid Gold Satellite Sister, and your prize is fantastic. We didn't tell you about this in advance. Long time. We didn't ago. know. We didn't know. This <laughs> came in at the last minute. You were going to get a coffee mug, but like you already have one. So we do, we do, we better. So uh, 
longtime supporter away luggage <gasps> is sending you a gift card for five hundred dollars. No way! Okay. <laughs> so. I mean, you know how much we love their suitcases, their bags, their accessories, and five hundred dollars will go a long way to getting you back out there whenever yeah. it's on. So, oh, the way for that, we thank them for all of their support, and thank you for playing along, Nancy. Thank, thank you, you, Nancy. Nancy. Honor, Nancy. Honor, thank you. thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, this was fun. You did a great job. Thank you. Okay, it's time for us to actually thank a couple people. We're trying to wrap up here. We said an hour. It looks like we're going to go a little over. So thanks for sticking with us. We're just having too much fun up here. Um, Liz and Monica, good trivia questions you put together. Excellent. Uh, first, we want to thank the team from Sixth and I. We absolutely could not have done this without them without them. This would not have happened on so many levels. So a big thanks uh, to everybody there. Thanks to Heather, Heather Moran, who was our first point of contact and our trivia queen. Jackie Leventhal, thank you so much for all the work. And Sasha Fried Snowed, thank you. You made it so easy. Mark Perkins is our engineer tonight, and we really, really appreciate it. We want to thank our sponsor, Away, for stepping up. Thank you, Away. It's great to see you. Great to have those bags and that gift card to give away. Um, we wanted to thank a couple of the Satellite Sisters crew for over the years. So when we first started on the radio, our first partners were WNYC and Oregon Public Broadcasting. But the key figure behind the scenes was our original sixth sister, Rosemary St. Clair, who ran Mudbath Productions. And she is watching now from her home in Oregon. So right on. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, um, Rosemary. Yeah, we salute you. Uh, and now we're going to go to an old tradition at Satellite Sisters. We have some sassy awards to give out to this handsome group of radio personalities that are showing up on your screen. You all can unmute yourselves now because it's time. Uh, all right, Monica, do you want to start us off? Sure. Our first sassy award goes to Miss Corny Cole, and she was our amazing producer. Again, another one of our unofficial six sisters. She even came to our family reunion. So Corny, Corny, we're giving you the sassy for the biggest laugh and the biggest diet Dr. Pepper habit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I am honored. I, this is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Our second Sassy Award goes to Sarah Sweeney, who looks suspiciously like a Dolan family cousin, but she's not. <laughs> she is a big time ABC <laughs> guru. And what she did for Satellite Sisters, she created the first Satellite Sister website. Okay, and that was. We were living big time with that. I mean, she could do anything. Whatever we asked her, Sarah did it. I wish she had come up maybe with a dating app. That might have been helpful as well. But Sarah, we want to give you the, the sure I can figure it out sassy for everything you ever did for us, Sarah. Take Thank a bow. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And yes, I Bravo. stole the name for my book from Sarah Sweeney because I always loved her last name. I took care of that in. I didn't care that exactly. If we would literally call Sarah on like a Sunday night, she'd be in New York. We're like, can you get this up by Monday morning? Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, next up, John Ramos, our original engineer slash creative director slash voiceover artist. Um, John, I also want to say I know that yesterday was your 22nd wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. There were many Saturday mornings because we went on the air at 6 a.m. Saturdays. And John would be in the booth as well, you know, corny. But also your wife, Suzanne, often came with you. So I feel like we know your family so well. We've been to your kids' christenings and their birthday parties. And we miss you and we love you. But John Ramos, you get... The Kira Knightley cut. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually shocked somebody had the answer to that. I actually, I actually wrote Leslie. I said, "Hey, good job. Way to go." <laughs> By the way, I wrote something down. I hope it's spelled correctly. Can you see that? It says pioneers. Oh. That's a, when I heard that term. That's exactly what I think. This show is a pioneering show for the times that we are in now. 
with women's rights and all that type of stuff. So I even, I even email Liz and Leanne sometimes when I see women stuff and I go, look, this is something you were doing 20 years ago. All right, so. I know. John will always be in our life for that reason. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sheila, Julie, Monica, Liz, Leanne. Good, good to see all of you. All right. Our next award goes to Emily Loudermilk, everybody. My former neighbor and my first and forever favorite employee of the Booty Tutor. All right, Emily. <laughs> she did all my graphics for me she taught for me and then i introduced her to the sisters and now she does all those gorgeous graphics for their website and she is our fresh face sassy <laughs> right emily <laughs> All right, and last but not least, we want to introduce you to our current engineer, Sergio Enriquez. Um, honestly, Sergio saved the show because uh, three years ago, I had maxed out technically on editing and emotionally on editing. I no longer <laughs> wanted to do either of those things, nor could I. So when we moved to Wondery and they said, well, you should meet Sergio, he can edit your show. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and he's such a delight to work with. Sergio, you get the sassy for no back talk. You don't give us any back talk, Sergio. We love it. Thank oh, you. Thank We're so you, glad you're here you. tonight. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> glad to do the show, it's always happy. Every Tuesday, it's a good laugh to start. So I love it. Oh, thanks. Oh, we miss good. seeing you, Sergio. We miss seeing you. We do. Well, we used to see Sergio in the Wondery when Leon and I would be in the Wondery studio. But now we don't see you, but you're always there for us. Thank you. Oh, thank Go back you. to okay. Um, okay, this makes me cry seeing all you guys. So I think you have to go now. Okay, there oh, she goes. No. There she goes. <laughs> was our theme song yeah now i know thank you so much you guys but 21 years hard to believe and you've all been such an important part of it we we thank you can't thank you enough i'm not going to make it to the end of this show all right i think <laughs> i think i'm supposed to tell you guys to turn your cameras off thank you thank you for being here we'll be in touch Thanks. soon now we're coming up to the baby wrap up. wrap up and okay all right, Liz, I do want to just give one other thanks to everybody at Wondery. There are new distributors and we have a wonderful sales and marketing team there and they have allowed us, you know, they've done great work for us and gotten us great sponsors and we appreciate all the work that they've done. We love being part of their network. Well, you know, there's one other group that we need to thank and we talked about at the beginning of this show what we did right and what we did wrong. And the number one thing that we did right is you, our audience. You know, we started with a really quaint relationship that you would actually turn a dial on a radio at a specific time and a specific date. And, but you got it immediately. You wrote to us, you said it, you, we sounded like your best friends, your college friends, your book club, your siblings. We had this powerful half-baked idea about women and friendship and you bought into it. You responded to our early discussions about eyebrows and breast exams and widowhood. Public radio was really shocked to learn that you care about your parents and your pets and you have very, very strong opinions about bras, okay? 21 years in, you did that. You have always encouraged us with your responses. You wanted to hear more topics about what women care about, about their work, their family, their relationship, their community. You gave us permission to go deep on shallow topics. You have been very tolerant to no follow-up questions. <laughs> and you seem to actually like the occasional dead air from <laughs> laughter. Uh, when 9-11 happened, you reached out to us we tried so hard to stay connected to you in those confusing days after the attacks. We really realized how precious you were to us. You came with us to ABC XM radio, or maybe you found us there. You formed a community of helping and sharing and supporting other people. You came to our events, 
you had your own events and sometimes you didn't even invite us. <laughs> uh, you reminded all that came to the satellite sister and Mr. Hood to play nice. Uh, you were always, you didn't always agree with us, but you were thoughtfully and kindly corrected us with our, the multitude of on air inaccuracies and blunders that we made. And with each move, you helped us figure out how to stay connected. You were the pi podcast pioneers, not just us, you. You have always been funnier, smarter, nicer, kinder, craftier and more tech savvy than we could ever be. And like a good friend, you have shared your joys and your pain and you have been there for us and comforted us on dark days and helped us really celebrate the joys in our lives and in our families' lives. Quite frankly, we don't know how we would have made it this past year during this current unpleasantness as Liz calls it without you. I mean, we were the ones that said, perk it up, but you were the ones that were making the difference in our lives. There were some weeks this past year where we really felt like maybe we didn't have anything else to say. And then you posted, look what I did, all those <laughs> wonderful photos you wrote to us and you gave us that support, that courage. You told us to keep the conversation going like the good friends that you are. You gave us that support and here you are today, over 1100 people. We are, we're beyond words, 21 years. You have made our lives so meaningful. It's always been a two-way conversation between us and you. You have shaped our 21 year, relationship and we don't want to lose you uh, and your support for satellite sisters and these five real adult sisters that you have helped keep together keep close and connected for two decades so we are humbled by the collective power of you we we can't imagine our lives without you we are absolutely filled with gratitude. So now take your glasses. Did you make the cocktails? Did yeah. you do it? Make the cocktails. This is a toast to you, to you, to us, to mm. friendship, to conversation, to love. Cheers. Mm. Mm. And don't forget to call your satellite sisters. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much to Liz, to Julie, to Leon, to Monica and Sheila. Thanks to everyone in the audience for joining us. The link to purchase copies of the Sweeney Sisters with autographed book plates is in the chat box. We're emailing everyone the link as well. Please come back and see us for more virtual events. Check out our calendar at sixthandi.org. And when the time comes, we really look forward to welcoming you back to Sixth and I. Until then, take care, good night, and you're the best. Mm -hmm.